Welcome to Downtown Sports. My name is Downtown Stephen Brown, and in today's video, guys, we're going to be going over some news notes. The last couple of Maple Leaf games previewing their next upcoming game against the Edmonton Oilers and talking about some things that I've found interesting over the last couple of games. And I guess we can start off with the lines from practice Tuesday, January the 19th here. And it looks like Adam Brooks is going to be drawing into the lineup against the Edmonton Oilers and Miko Layden will be drawing out. This is what it looks like over on Cab Friendly, and they got a little bit more cap space to their name going with a guy like Adam Brooks over someone like Alexander Barabanov or Miko Letnin. If you're not familiar with Adam Brooks, the Maple Leafs drafted him in 2016. He's already 24 years old, turning 25, so he's not really a prospect anymore. A little bit of a late bloomer. Sheldon Keefe has had this guy at the AHL level for a couple of seasons, so he knows what he's all about, how he can fit into the lineup. And you might not think much of him, but he plays center. And if he can be a third or a fourth line center, and he can be a late blooming prospect for the Toronto Maple Leafs, players like this are very, very valuable because you got to remember back to 2016, 17, and then the 17, 18 season, the Maple Leafs traded two second round picks for Brian Boyle and Thomas Placanics at the trade deadline. And if they got prospects like this, well, they might not have to do that and they can keep their second round pick or use it in a different trade. Just going to take a quick look at the game that the Maple Leafs played on Saturday night in which they won 3-2 against the Ottawa Senators. Saturday was my 23rd birthday, so you all can wish me a happy birthday by clicking like on this video and subscribing. This is the game that Jack Campbell started, and a lot of people thought that the end result of this game might spark a goalie controversy for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I'll leave the previous video that I made here on the channel linked above the screen, what if the Toronto Maple Leafs traded Frederick Anderson, where I go over a lot of hypotheticals in that video, and I use some advanced analytics and some stats to put into context why we would even be having that conversation to begin with. Even though I've already made that video, even if Jack Campbell shut out the Ottawa Senators and the Ottawa Senators absolutely shelled the Toronto Maple Leafs with scoring chances galore, I still don't think that there should be a goalie controversy this early on in the season. They got to give Frederick Anderson the next couple of weeks at least to play himself out of the net. Anderson has been here for four years and three out of those four years were absolutely immaculate. He should have been nominated for the Vezina Trophy in the 16-17 season, but wasn't anywhere close. Wasn't even in the top five in voting. He's part of the main leadership group on this team. A lot of the players on the team really like Frederick Anderson. They really respect Frederick Anderson. You have to give him the opportunity to play himself out of the net. I'm not saying to give him the entire season to figure out, but you gotta at least give him a month or a month and a half. All in all, I thought it was a good win for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Last night's game against the Winnipeg Jets, they won 3-1. to one. one of those goals was an empty netter, which we will talk about in a minute or so. So basically, 2-1 to one was the score. And that's important because there's a big difference between 3-1 to one and 2-1. to one, And the Maple Leafs absolutely killed the Winnipeg Jets from the drop of the puck in this game. It was not even close by every single metric that you could possibly use to measure both of these teams. The Toronto Maple Leafs absolutely killed the Winnipeg Jets. But still, the score was 2-1 before that empty net goal. It was still a close game. An unlucky bounce could have just have easily tied the game for the Winnipeg Jets. And it was 2-0 for the Toronto Maple Leafs right up until the end of the second period. The Maple Leafs won this game, but they got absolutely goalied by Connor Hellebuck. That guy was absolutely fantastic, and that's why I think that the Winnipeg Jets are going to be one of the teams to come out of the North Division and make the playoffs. The Toronto Maple Leafs with Connor Hellebuck in net would probably be Stanley Cup favorites. And I don't think that's too outlandish to say because the guy did win the Vesna Trophy last year. If you sorted the standings by points percentage, the Toronto Maple Leafs would be third, but we're not going to do that because first place looks very, very nice. And if you take a look at the scoring race here, I mean, Mitch Marner and John Deveres are both tied atop the league for the most points. Now, they wouldn't be if you sorted it by points per game or goals per game, but again, Mitch Marner and John Deveres tied for the league lead in goals. It's very early on, and it doesn't mean much. It's just nice to look at. In terms of expected goals percentage here, the Thornton, Matthews, and Marner line, according to MoneyPuck.com, is one of the most productive lines in the entire National Hockey League so far to start the year. Now, if you're taking a look at the zone starts for the three players on that line, Joe Thornton first, Austin Matthews second, and Mitch Marner third, they've played a lot in the offensive zone. And if you play a lot in the offensive zone, you should control the majority of the expected goals. 
So they're controlling a vast majority of the shot attempts. They're controlling the vast majority of the expected goals for. They are one of the better offensive lines in hockey. And if you take a look at the shooting percentage for this line at 5-on-5, it's 4.77%. And there's no way, even if the line has Mitch Marner on it, the line also has Austin Matthews on it, that 4.77% shooting percentage is not sustainable for that group. It will increase and yet even with horrendous luck and an absolute abysmal shooting percentage that will not continue for the type of player that austin matthews is 4.8 percent he's got way too good a shot to continue doing that this guy's got four points in four games and people are acting like he's been a non-factor so far which is not the case at all now, I can't show what happened after Mitch Marner scored the empty net goal because for some reason, when I show hockey clips, even if it's without the audio, YouTube flags it as inappropriate. YouTube says that this is violent um, and it demonetizes the video. I showed uh, one hockey hit between Igor Korshkov and another guy in the NHL and they demonetized the video because of it. I'll leave a link to a clip of it that was on Twitter yesterday, but... Basically, Mitch Marner comes in, scores the empty net goal, and Neil Pionk slides off to the side after attempting to throw a big hit on the play, absolutely missed, and kind of wipes out along the boards, and he's got some choice words to say to Mitch Marner, Mark Shifley joins into the bunch, and Mitch Marner chirps him back, and there's a little bit of a scrum on the ice with Mitch Marner and John Tavares at the forefront of it, and all I gotta say is, yes. Bring me more of this. You're going to tell me that Mitch Marner is going to develop the slightest bit of an attitude. You're going to tell me that John Tavares, the guy with the captaincy, the guy who gets called out all the time for some apparent reason for not being a good leader, are finally going to show some leadership qualities on the ice. I'm joking when I say that, of course. I think that John Tavares is an awesome captain, and I think that Mitch Marner wears his heart on his sleeve when he plays, but it is nice to see that type of reaction from them. Another thing that I wanted to highlight here is how good of a season Zach Hyman is having in a contract year, mind you. And that's the awesome thing about pulling Hyman out of the top six and putting him in the top nine, is that that allows you to play Hyman in basically an exclusive defensive role. And if you're playing him exclusively in a defensive role in all of those minutes, it frees up more offensive minutes for the top two lines. To put into context what Zach Hyman has been able to do through the first four games this year is he's playing basically in almost an exclusive defensive role, but still controlling the vast majority of the shot attempts when he's on the ice. He's got a negative percentage relative to the rest of his teammates, so the rest of his teammates have a higher control of the shot attempts when they're on the ice, but if you contextualize it by looking at the zone starts... I don't care about the percentage relative to his teammates. Zach Hyman is doing all the work and getting incredible results. And just to tee up the next couple of games, because the next two are against the Edmonton Oilers, the 1 and 3 Edmonton Oilers, by the way, they're a pretty similar team to the Toronto Maple Leafs. They've been worse defensively, mind you, but they still are a team where they trade chances with you. All the problems that this year's Toronto Maple Leafs have, the Edmonton Oilers have it worse. To me, the Toronto Maple Leafs are just a better version of the Edmonton Oilers and vice versa. And that's hard for some people to wrap their heads around because the Oilers have McDavid and Dreisaitl. Those two are not the problem. It's the rest of the team around them. And that's not a secret. A lot of people understand that. But the Maple Leafs are deeper and they have a better supporting cast. And if you could believe it, the Edmonton Oilers' goaltending situation is a little bit more complicated. So what I'm trying to say is that I'm expecting four points in the next two games. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Make sure to like the video if you did like it and subscribe for more because more is always on the way. And guys, remember, these games against all Canadian teams in the all-Canadian division are a lot of fun. And like they've been hyping it up on the broadcast, I think these teams are going to develop some really, really bitter rivalries by the end of it.